Welcome to the sixth episode of the Liberate RV Accounts series, in which we talk about everything anarchy, volunteerism, uh, agorism, peaceful parenting, uh, I guess from the lens view of those who are against the state, right? And so uh, to our left here we have James, Bugatti Veron, Cal Molone, Tyler, Derek, and Herzon. Uh, so with that, we're going to start off with, uh, I guess, the big thing that happened this past week, uh, Thanksgiving, or as we're appropriating as Anarcho-Capitalism Day, uh, I guess I want to talk about, I guess, what do you guys know about Thanksgiving mm -hmm. aside from the narrative that Wednesday Adams gives and the uh, Adams family? Because, uh, because I came across something interesting, you know, uh, versus like what the South Park would say, you know, is the alien origins of Thanksgiving. Uh, so some of the origins is interesting uh, in that in the first year or two, like in 1620 or 1621, there was a lot of people that starved. You know, the narrative goes that these, uh, the Pilgrims came off the Mayflower, founded the Plymouth Colony, and they had a hard winter, and then they became friends with the local American mm. Indians, and they had Thanksgiving. Um, actually, the more of the facts surrounding that, when you kind of search deeper, a lot of them starved because they were lazy, uh, because they had a system of socialism in place in which uh, everybody would put all of the stuff that they create or the goods that they uh, put their work into a pile, and everyone would get whatever they want to meet their needs. So that meant that at least uh, one fifth of the people, or like a small percentage of the people, would do the, all the hard work for everyone else who uh, didn't participate or contribute. And so eventually you, it led to a lot of people starving to death, eventually led to a lot of thieves, you know, running to the uh, American Indian um, camps and uh, stealing their food. So for the first two years, uh, this happened in Jamestown. This happened why a lot of starvation occurred because of the socialist policy that they had in place in which everybody had to put their bounty together for the good of the community, you know, very uh, utilitarian. The reason why uh, that they saved themselves or they were able to have Thanksgiving was they'd done away with that socialistic process uh, and they <laughs> instilled uh, capitalism. Okay, listen, you guys have your plot of land, you have your plot of land, plan whatever you want, uh, reap whatever you want, you can trade with it, you can consume it, do whatever you want, but it's yours. Once they instilled that notion of property rights, uh, then they had bountiful harvest, then nobody was starving, and there was an abundance of corn and abundance of crops. Uh, so it's interesting, uh, the stark contrast in the first two years, that you have socialism implemented there, and people are starving, and the moment they uh, instill capitalism, uh, the opposite happened. You guys ever hear of that? Yeah? I mean, we, we, see, it all, we see it all the time, right? Um, like you see right now in uh, Argentina with their... Um, loss of, uh, I guess, toilet paper and toiletries and uh, diapers and all the, uh, the goods there that the government is controlling with socialism leads to a loss, loss of, um, I guess, uh, of products out there in the market. Um, so that's the origins, I guess, the beginning of how that stuff started. And this didn't just happen in Plymouth Colony, it also happened in Jamestown. So it's interesting, uh, the practice of socialism that was instilled. So, you know, you'd think that future foundations would kind of uh, be based off more on private capitalism and that kind of private uh, respect for private property, but uh, kind of turn our way uh, yeah. at some point. I have a really long story for Thanksgiving if you want to know How long? the, tr the yeah, true story. The true story? What's the true, the true story? story? Okay, so we can start. The real Thanksgiving was started by Abraham Lincoln when he wanted to nationalize the idea of Thanksgiving, which Thanksgiving used to be some some religious thing that you just do, like if something awesome happens, or something, or you're a terrible person, you're just like, you know what, I want to give thanks, you know, a day of thanksgiving, right? And so he wanted to unite everyone into this kind of uniform identity, because people were rioting in the north because of the draft, and they were just mowing these people down. And so he kind of lied and said that, oh, yeah, it's all peaceful and stuff. We should have a day of Thanksgiving, even though there were tons mm. of riots in, in New York. And he, and he took this from George Washington doing the same thing to try to cover up Shays' Rebellion because the, uh, the soldiers didn't get paid, and then they come home and like, oh, you've got property taxes you've got to pay now. Right. right. Well, and we'll go back to the original, the Pilgrim thing, right? 
they were terrible people. Like, they invented the whole idea of let's put smallpox in blankets and give it to poor people to kill them off. I don't know if that was ever mm. been substantiated, though. Oh, yeah. Like, they they figured this out, and they wanted to... They, they didn't want to... The, the Indian thing was done later. That was... But they got the idea from... What was happening was they wanted... They, they thought, in, in their idea, uh, people of different races and poor people uh, were poor because they were cursed by God, mm-hmm. right? And so they're like, well, we can just... These are subhumans. We can just wipe them out. And they figured out that if you put blankets around people with smallpox and then give those same blankets to the poor people, that they end up getting smallpox and dying. I, I, I think I may have read something like the only recorded evidence of that happened was uh, trying to attack, like, uh, the French trying to attack a... English ports, or maybe vice versa, or are the American Indians uh, doing that uh, tactic t- towards uh, English settlers? No, it was the English settlers that did it to the Indians. Uh, well, no, but but looking into it, uh, reading facts, there's, I believe I came across a good article saying there's no facts that substantiate it. Uh, the only thing they found is like it's really hard to find anything that actually, that stuff actually really happening. Um, but yeah, I'll look I into think it. Columbus had like journals where he wrote about all that kind of stuff they did to the Indians. Uh, I guess maybe in, in South America, perhaps uh, in North. North uh, well, he was no, he was mostly in uh, the Caribbean, down in Latin America. Uh, he didn't really go anywhere near um, the northern regions. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I do know that there was some kind of uh, like property norms, like they wouldn't really steal other land that was kind of frowned upon. They had penalties against their own colonists if they were. This is later when it was further established when the socialism part kind of went away. The first two years, where they're stealing every, everything. But after that, there was a, a lot of respect for private property. You know, you have to buy uh, the land from the American Indians. So there was it wasn't this rampant theft that was going on in the beginning of some of these colonies. Um, Tom Woods goes a little into that, which is uh, kind of enlightening. Um, I've read books that say exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah. The stuff my the lies my teacher told me is one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got to look into that. So what do you guys think of, uh, I guess, how was your Thanksgiving? We had a good anarcho-capitalism day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, was a lot of, that was a lot of food. I'm very, uh, <laughs> we still have a lot of turkey left over. Yeah, we still have pie left, too. All right. I think that's, that's something that, uh, like, you're, like, people have family that come over and they don't want to associate with them. You know, that's interesting in an awkward position to put yourself in. You know, so it'd be more of a, I guess, inviting of uh, rich voluntary associations, but it seems like a lot of times people go see their, their family when they're kind of forced to in those kinds of occasions um, and sit there uncomfortably in, in these awkward moment silences at the dinner table. Um, but I don't know, it, it's, uh, it's interesting, I guess, that kind of forced association relations. So what do you guys think of uh, Black Friday? I mean, for me... I didn't do anything for Black Friday. I don't need to buy anything. Like so, oh, the incentive of oh, it's going to be cheaper today for some mysterious reason. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, okay, that's cool. It's but I don't need anything. It's what? Sickening. Sickening. Yeah. Also, Actually, my parents yeah. had the news station on, and they were talking about the prices for things, like. You know, for example, a crock pot was this price. They're like, actually, it was that price, like, at the end of September. <laughs> like, it, it was this price, like, a month ago. Like, so it's not even, like... They just put a sign. Sometimes there are deals, right? right. I mean, like, and sometimes deals. And sometimes there's, like, well, like, two TVs for a really good price. But a lot of times, it's not really that much cheaper that well, you can I mean, find it. You can get that same price on the internet, so, I mean... Well, isn't there... What is the internet... Black Friday, the, not like, Cyber Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that that was a thing. So apparently, some guy figured out uh, because he found he found this one deal on on eBay where you could buy a PS4 uh, with, with with like a game in a, in a profile for ninety bucks. And he showed that to some guy in Walmart, and Walmart had this deal going where they would match a price on anything. And they're like, okay, we'll match it. 90 bucks PS4 with a profile in the game. That guy got fired. And, uh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. That guy got fired. I don't know. Price match is, is not supposed to work with online. I mean, it's supposed to be like other in-store. You could walk over there now. And but like they ran, of course, they oh ran out God. of PS4s. Like, they, well, Walmart fired. approved it that they would match it. Amazon, and they forget that anyone can create a profile on Amazon and uh, pretend to sell stuff on there. Because <laughs> so someone created a PS4 advertisement for 90 bucks, 
and uh, everyone running to Walmart, a lot of PS4s were sold, $400 worth of uh, electronics for 90 bucks. And very, very quickly, though, you know, they honored it. Very quickly, though, they, they stopped. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's legit, I guess, right? Uh, unless you're the person who's, uh... I know. That was. I saw that. I'm like, oh my gosh. All right. So how many years do I have to wait before the PS4 is worth ninety dollars? All right. I guess we wait for like three years. Three years. Right? Four Maybe years, faster three years. with no IP. You know, we can go faster, cheaper. Inflation's good. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah, I, there's, it's interesting because a lot of people look at Black Friday and think like, well, look at this humanity's uh, scum of the earth, look at them uh, acting like animals at each other for these bargain prices and trampling over people each other, to death. trampling people to <laughs> death, right? That, that happens uh, like every year now. Uh, you know, it's, it's, so I think something that they neglect to look into, like, or like, I get you look at Reason pushed out this, published this uh, article that had... Uh, like all the regulations in the past six years have made you 75% poorer. Um, and also, I can't imagine all the increased regulations and restrictions on businesses that, you know, reasons why they have to increase costs like uh, good food, healthy food, like on Joe Salentin's farm. Uh, good food costs a lot. So if you didn't have a lot of these restrictions... I would say most people probably don't have food, that's it. Right. But if you, I'm saying if you didn't have a lot of these restrictions, if you didn't have government involvement in taxation, a lot of these goods would be cheaper and you wouldn't have to wait for one day out of the year. You know, I think a lot of these goods would be cheaper if the government didn't get involved. And in the because every every part of that machine of the PS4, for example, is taxed. Every part that it goes to the machinery to build a PS4 tax, the labors, the parts, uh, import tariffs, uh, a lot of a lot of overhead costs because of government. So if you think about that. Uh, you know, every day could be a Black Friday deal, right? Like Black, Black Monday deals, Black Tuesday deals, right? Things could be cheaper, and you wouldn't have to wait for one day out of the year to rush into a store. You know, it would always be affordable all year round. Um, so that's something I, I, I look at when I see uh, Black Friday. You know, I guess abundance of capitalism, abundance of cheap goods. Uh, I guess a lot of people want to buy these these goods faster because, you know, their money's depreciated, so they want to spend faster. In terms of materialism, but well, another thing, I, this is something I've thought of before about Black Friday. I feel like people use the inhumanity or like the chaos of like the people trying to get stuff for cheap as a, they try to use that as like representation for capitalism. Be like, oh look, look, capitalism is totally bad. Like, no, that's not true capitalism. You could, this is only one day of the year that these prices are this low. If it was true capitalism, it would just be what the market says it's going to be mm-hmm. at all times, and if. And it, the market says it should be the cheapest price that brings better profit to you know the, per, to the better profit margin and cheap cheap for the consumer. So it's really just a marketing tactic. Yeah, and I'm like that's they're allowed to do that because it's a corporatist system, yeah. not a capitalist yeah. one. Am I what? Yeah. Is that what the problem is? Oh. On that, yeah. Let me go yeah. fix that. Um, yeah, I guess. With Cyber Mondays and Black Friday deals, that's uh, I find that to be of interest, I guess, right now for electronics. Let me unplug this real quick. All right, back in business. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it, and you you have IP uh, in the market, you know, stifling innovation and. Uh, preventing a lot of uh, competition from occurring, you could even have ch- even more cheaper products and abundance of it. There was a video out there of a little boy, somewhere probably a Spanish-speaking boy, opening up his his birthday gift, and he gets like a, a cutting board, and he's like, "Thank you, mom. You know, I'm gonna cook a lot, of cook, you know, cut a lot of great food for us. You know, everything's him. He's he's happy and kisses his grandma, kisses his parents. He opens up another box, and as he's opening it. Uh, he looks inside, and he looks at his parents in shock, and like, like, like speechless. And then he starts to cry, and he's uh, thanking them so much. And inside that box was a tablet, an electronic uh, tablet. And uh, you know, so they, they're kind of, you know, they saved up some money to buy that. But you know, people they say, "Well, look, look at the, I guess, the wealth that they saved up for their child's happiness." But the other side of the story would be look at the capitalists that have also made this uh, product very affordable. Uh, for everyone to have, right? You have six billion people in the world, six billion of them have cell phones, right? Uh, getting electronics and uh, tablets now are a lot easier uh, and that kind of abundance and cheaper prices. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. 
But no, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, no, capitalism. Um, it's like, yeah, yeah, they, they say that while well, they're on their <laughs> iPhones and yeah. on their iMacs and uh, in, in that regard. Um, iWatch. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It should just be cheaper. It just we need it to be even cheaper now. Like tablet technology is not where I want it to be yet. And I'm mad about that. And like Microsoft, you're already stepping up your game. Keep doing like the the iPad's still pretty nice. We want something sleek and portable. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technology is not there yet. All right. So that's uh Black Friday. I don't don't really have much else to to go over. I mean, great deals, good capitalism. You bought stuff, great. If you're out there trampling someone over, it's like, you know, <laughs> in that regard, says a lot about uh, you as well. But um, in talking about capitalism, there's the um, taxi competitions going on now, which is interesting. Um, so anybody ever take a cab here in Richmond? I've yeah. taken a cab here. you taken a cab? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take for you to wait? Did, did it give you are always over the estimated time? I, I needed to make that appointment. It was an appointment I had. And I didn't have my car because it was getting repaired. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to get there like on time. I only called an hour ahead and said, "Hey, I'm gonna need a ride from here to here in an hour." Right. Can you do that? And they're like, "Yeah." So they were kind of there on the dot. I told them, "This is where I, this is right. where I need you to be there." And so it was no problem. I haven't called them before. Just like, I need a taxi now and wait. Okay, so yeah, well, that's what I'm asking if anyone's ever done that. Uh, I have, and they always arrive like, like various uh, like well, degrees of like timing. So like, it's never really on time. They don't really go within the estimated time. Usually, the trick in DC is to like call two cabs at once, and whoever really gets there racing. first, nice. Uh, nice. All right, you know, and that's like, hey, uh, pick show first, pick show first, right? Um, so local Napoleon taxi cab, I think is what they call it yeah. here. Uh, now they're upgrading. Now they have apps out <laughs> to try to compete against Uber. Uh, so they're copying the system, it, yeah. right? December 15th, what's up? <laughs> what about December 15th? Oh, yeah, so Napoleon actually is launching their own GPS app where they can route drivers within a radius. Well, welcome to like the free market. Like We've already done that. Like So it's just going to get more convenient. For people to yeah. ride share, or people just and getting taxis good. in the future, so it's disrupted the market in a very positive way. But uh, yeah, if you want to drive for Uber, you can use the referral code AKYX7. <laughs> I love that and you have it on the bottom there. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the camera. Real fast. You had to make it worth something. I put it right on uh, Washington's face. Oh my gosh, and dude! Felony tyrant. Isn't that like a felony or something? The facing. No, what else said it on fire? Is it? Yeah. To the face of dollar. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like crime or something. Um, you going to jail, man? You're going to jail? <laughs> I thought I, I thought it was my money. I thought I owned my money. No, you don't. No, you don't. No. It all you don't. belongs to the state. It, it owns your government yeah. property. Forget about that. Uh, uh, so that's interesting. So you have like something that they should have come out a long time ago, but of course they got comfortable with their monopoly cartel granted by the state and. They have no competitors since it's illegal to compete. You look in a lot of cities, they have uh, medallions is what they call them. So like there can only be a certain amount of taxi cabs out there. And so a medallion, I guess, gives you permission to use a taxi cab to collect fares. And so the cost of these medallions, because people sell them, people own them, so you can kind of rent them out, so you can sell them too. And the price of that has plummeted a lot because uh, no one's buying them anymore. So well, why why try to go in the taxi business when you, know, when you have Uber, we can do like a... Like half the cost of trips, round trips, and such. Uh, so, which is great. Prices are falling. Uh, you know, competitions forcing Napoleon to improve their game. Uh, you know, when they got kind of lazy and, and comfortable with that. Now there's competition. Now they're trying to improve. You know, kind of like that South Park uh, moment. So, you know, yeah, why don't they just improve their service and clean out their cabs and you know make it enjoyable and nice for everyone? So, uh, so that's interesting. I like that. Uh, of course. Taxi cabs trying to go to the government and stuff. Uber and Lyft is kind of disgusting. Um, the monopoly cartel is disgusting, of course. But I think that's a, a good sign uh, to show. And some people say, talk about IP and, uh, and ideas. It's like, well, uh, if they want to go that far, it's like, well, where's the taxi cab, you know, paying the royalties to Uber, you know, for borrowing that idea, right? Copying that method. Yeah. So what, who patented it having taxis? Nobody. There is an overhead on like cellular data plans that I think um, 
improve ourselves pretty well by giving people iPhones. Like, not everyone has an iPhone. Like, we take the smartphone for granted, and uh, Uber is just an app itself. But yeah, for Napoleon drivers, think about it. You have to buy an iPhone now. Like, that's a, a barrier to you entering the market. Hmm. And they say that's actually less, there's less overhead, and especially buying them down. Asking for permission is actually really expensive. Right? <laughs> And they're trying to say that, uh, you know, oh, do the whole scary thing that you, know, you could be riding with any stranger. You know, we go through, we're licensed. <laughs> All my favorites are cool. Yeah. All right, it's like, you know, we're government protected. The government uh, licenses us, so you don't have nothing to worry about us. You know, Uber drivers oh, no. are very uh, shady characters you're driving with. Uh, but now they, they have that reputation system involved with it. So they have a lot of... Can you explain the reputation system? All right, so it's uh, one star out of five. It's kind of unprofessional for me to actually talk about this with customers, okay, okay, okay. but <laughs> since we're addressing it, um, yeah, when you downrate people, we understand there's problems, we'll make sure that you don't match up with that person. You guys won't share rides, you won't be in the same car ever again, don't worry about it. And that's one of the best ways to actually rate, and the drivers can rate you too. So if you were if you were driving someone, you didn't really like them, you didn't want to pick them up again, um, I could make sure, again, by downrating you, but the whole rating system is really geared towards the drivers, because once they drop below a certain rating, they can actually just get cut from the service altogether. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have to be competitive among Uber drivers <coughs> to keep a nice car. And to so they, they regulate rating. themselves internally, This is pretty cool. Uh, it's, part of, it's part of the app. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I think that's pretty cool. So when people talk about shadiness, well, you can, you can rate the shadiness. <laughs> no shadiness, awesome driver. Uh, give me a bottle of water and side touring around Richmond or something. What if you never rate? If anyone ever sees you again, they're like, they never rated Uber driver. I think something happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, no one cares. <laughs> and you can rate your customers. So it's this interesting seeking. So you don't have to be uh, connected uh, in terms of ride sharing. So that's pretty cool. But I usually give everyone five. So, like, hey, you're kind of giving me money, so we're all good. <laughs> five, like, all Fair. the way. All I'm right. inflating the, the <laughs> rating nice. system is. No, that's great. That's great. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, and all these people think, well, taxis have unions and, you know, those jobs. Uh, it's like, Uber's taking our jobs. I'm hoping to not see them on the road anymore. Like, you, you, like, amateur taxi drivers are dick drivers on the road. Like, I'm sorry. Like, people could pull your license. Like, if a cop pulls you over for acting the way you are, I, I, I know how to drive, all right? Like, for real, I deliver pizza. I deliver medicine. I've been driving for five years now. I've been on the road. And you can't do some things like that in the city or the public. Right. Uh, cool. So I think it will actually provide a safer means of transportation too. I like that. I like that. Uh, next thing on the uh, agenda here. Uh, interesting question. So uh, how racism can be dealt with in a free society? Um, I bring it up because recently there was a a girl named Carly Rose, and she wrote I think on her Twitter account. Um, so she wrote, "All the niggers burning the American flag should be sent to Africa." Uh, yeah. You know who else held that opinion? Abraham Lincoln. Uh, his idea of uh, slavery uh, was to send him to Africa. Uh, so he, thought, he didn't think that, uh, that they were equal with him, that they were, uh, he thought that they were like inferior intellectually and all this other negative stuff. Uh, and then there's quotes you can find of Abraham A lot Lincoln. A people saying, also wanted to send them back because they thought it would be safer for them because they wouldn't you know, they could start their own colony where they weren't experiencing the racism that was here. Mm -hmm. But and they did try to send people over, but it was so expensive. So we call that like even help maintain because like if you think about it, the colony starts over there. So who are they going to trade with? Like they yeah. now have to make so, they now have to make you know right connections with other groups of people to help sur to survive and. Because why don't they send the racists back to England instead, right? <laughs> or to Europe. You know that was never going to happen. <laughs> right? Like, wait a minute, I'm not the problem. You're the problem. Well, it's like when people are like, well, you're going to like it when you leave. It's like, well, how about the, the thieves who advocate for theft and murder? Obviously, people didn't want to go back because they went back. They weren't right. forced to go back. Right. But that, that's an interesting part when people go out to, like, the Lincoln Memorial uh, and commemorate this person. It's like, we do not look at you fairly or in, in good standing. Uh, kind of like Che, you know, people who wear Che shirts, so the guy was a racist, uh, he hated gay people, he was uh, a very... Executioner. Executioner. Yeah. <laughs> he was a really violent person. Yeah. He enjoyed killing people. Really kill oh my god, people. you don't see that in the Motorcycle Diaries. No one says anything about that. Not at all, no, they, they hide all that stuff. It's, uh, people were free. <laughs> no, yeah, it's disgusting. Disgusting. 
So it was interesting because so people on Twitter, uh, because there are pictures on there and our, our profile handle, and uh, they were able to trace that and find out who she was, you know, where she lives, uh, her Facebook account, and of course, because uh, you could do like reverse image search, you could take a picture, go on Google, and uh, see where else does this image pop up, and you can find out that like, oh, here's her Facebook page, and then you can go see her about section where she works. And then apparently she works at the Scooters Roadhouse, and people sent in a, um, the <laughs> Twitter and information uh, to her employers, and this is what her employers wrote. Uh, thank you everyone that have reached out to us and letting us know what has been happening. We're fully aware of the situation and, complete, and are completely disgusted by the comments that have been made. We've dealt with this individual quickly. Our hearts and prayers go out to all that have been affected by the unrest. This person's personal views by no means reflect how we feel and we have taken steps to terminate the person. She's been terminated. Terminated. Thank you to everyone that has uh, <laughs> reached out to you us. You repeat that three times. Okay, that they didn't It's terminated. <laughs> terminated. <laughs> You're fine. We were as disgusted as everyone to hear these uh, <laughs> kind of words spoken at this point, and this kind of talk and belief still exists in our world today. So that's that's awesome. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. You know, you you're starting to see a lot of businesses take up these values for quality. It's pretty cool in the way that these uh, businesses, capitalism, is uh, responding to these things uh, by uh, no longer having that kind of association uh, with such person they find to be uh, revolting. Uh, Otherwise, it reflects their organization, right, to continue hiring uh, those kinds of people. Oh, we got the cat's climb on that. Oh, my God. Uh, so that's, that's, that's I, would, I would imagine, how racism would also be oh continue gosh. to be responded uh, in a free society based on consent. You'd have, uh, you know, those who, kind of like, uh, again, like the baker who didn't want to make that cake. Holy uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. For uh, LGBT. Uh, okay, you guys psyched okay. out. There's no, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, good people. Yeah. <laughs> remain calm. Cats. The cats. cats. Team, and they remain in here. Remain in the <laughs> chair. There was the First horse level. that ran through here. All right. Uh, so you, you wouldn't have any of that. I mean, government obviously uh, would not be the answer to an organization that's inherently racist itself to solve racist problems. You know, they created a lot of these, uh, these tensions to begin with. Um, so what are your, your guys' thoughts in that regards? How would, the, how would the free market respond to racism. Because some people will say, well, you don't have an abundance of racism, you don't have government to keep it in check or force businesses to be open to, to everyone. Um, and you'll find that, uh, again, the only color that most businesses care about, you know, they really are into is green. creating profit, is green, right? Or one day is uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, right? It's yeah. not a color, but... It's orange. Yeah, it is orange. It's orange. Yeah, it's okay. orange. Okay. It's orange. Right. <laughs> Right, if you want your business, right? Otherwise, uh, your competitors will uh, tend to out uh, compete you and say we're open to everyone. We don't discriminate. You know, come and shop here instead. Uh, so I think that would be more of a, uh, I guess, great feeling to have. I guess as a venture capitalist, as an entrepreneur, to shut down racist businesses by out competing them, by providing better service. To do, you know, you have no right to profit. You know, so taking the customer base away from them and realize that their ideas. The prejudice and uh, that kind of racist racism or discrimination has no place here in society. There's no demand for it in the market, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we already see that being a thing in the market already. Most m most successful companies. Uh, let's take Starbucks for an example. They'll sell coffee to anybody. Uh, they don't care. The whole, the whole thing that happened with Chick Fil A when they were like, "Oh, we support," the, they give money to um, these groups that like. Uh, anti LGBT. Yeah, anti LGBT. Anti LGBT. Uh, groups. <laughs> there was a huge backlash against them, and then, and then there was that, and then KFC is like, "Hey, we'll sell fried chicken to anybody, guys. Right. You don't have, you, we don't care." But it's just not as good. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> They were still technically no, selling it but to anyone. Just... The fact that there was such a little reaction to that on Facebook, and we see, like, hey, that's a thing that matters even we see that already. Like, mm -hmm. The more open you are, the more accessible, the more unprejudiced you are, the more you are, you will appeal to people because people will be like, oh, hey, yeah, of course you should want my money. It doesn't make sense that, you, that you, you're seeking to make a profit and you're not going to let people do your things based on these stances. It's right. crazy. Right. Uh, no, I, I agree. And uh, it's pretty cool that, uh, what do they call it, Scooter's Roadhouse, Scooter from like Doug Funny, 
or Skeeter, I think is his name. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, that they respond in, in such a manner. You know, so that's you know values being pushed forward. That's uh, them not wanting to have any kind of association or relations with such people. And I imagine you know, the more that these values are adopted, you know, the more that many of us become abolitionists. Um, you know, that these values will be adopted within our society, within our culture. Um, and place above uh, the negative ones. And that's how you would out-compete, out-market, and out-size, um, and belittle, uh, not belittle, like whittle away uh, those kinds of thoughts. Um, unless they want to be part of uh, the economic uh, civilization uh, around them, right? You know, you have some problems. Let's talk about where these things are coming from, right? Uh, so that's cool. That's a, that's a recent one. Um, that hap- I've, I've seen a couple of these... Uh, restaurant response to that sort of stuff uh, often now. So it's been an increase now of like businesses responding to uh, racist uh, employees by just firing them. So that's that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I wonder what our unions think of that because sometimes they're like, well, you can't fire employees. Like, well, what about they make these kinds of remarks? What if they're racist psychopaths? Right. Uh, Do they have tenure? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Professors. Oh, gosh. I don't want them. <laughs> right. So we were going to talk about Star Wars and how statism played in the like Jedi Council, which is interesting because every Black Friday we would always watch Star Wars. Like me and my family, we had these big Thanksgivings. Mm-hmm. It was great to see like Return of the Jedi right by ten o'clock. Um, what was your favorite part of it, and where do you think the rebels did align along statism? People would say that they're rebelling against an empire that was still taking over, but before that they lived in representative democracy, like it was a state. Yeah, yeah, they're always saying democracy in space. Like, you guys will not be a space-bearing civilization on the state. You guys will never even get off your planet and interact with one another uh, with uh, state governments like that. So I would say that kind of denotes that there'd be no Star Wars uh, to begin with. Uh, I don't think it ever could advance and achieve that kind of space mobility and space faring civilization. Um, like even for us, you know, the moon is the, the farthest we'll ever get, you know, and how long ago was that? Um, so. If we did. Um, even if we did. Right. I'm just saying, conspiracy theories. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or if that money was better spent uh, with something else or, you know, in terms of uh, private affairs. Uh, so that's interesting. I wouldn't imagine Star Wars like that existing at all. Um, but it, you're you're sidestepping the question. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Jedi Council, has Jedi to be Councils, yes, yeah, so I guess status, right? They they can't not be status. <laughs> okay, well, I guess they can't uh, tie in their emotions. They got to be all very logical. They, and it's interesting, logically, they can't even deduce from that. Do they use uh, violence to solve their problems? Right? Well, uh, they had a clone yeah. army, but all right, that backfired. Or for the good, they say. Uh, I saw the. Uh, you guys watch the trailer yet? Yeah. Watch the trailer. They, they yeah, totally the used trailer. the force to solve. I can't to, wait. to solve the problem. Yes, into the e force. <laughs> so, restoring balance was a pretty big part of what Luke Skywalker promised to bring to the force. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. You know, what do you I tell us? You know what, what Tyler? I don't like lightsabers with crosscards on them, okay? They look stupid, <laughs> especially when they're made of plasma, okay? You cut your hand off right. trying to fight someone. Yeah, that's cool. I saw the memes are coming out there. So you okay. had like, one who like uh, ignites his lightsaber and it's a Chanaka. Uh, what the Swiss the, Army? The Swiss, oh, Army, Swiss Army lightsaber? So the, it Chonica? comes out Chanaka, one of those... Uh, Chanaka? One of those what candle lights? I don't know. The menorah. Hanukkah. A Hanukkah. Come on. What, do, what do you call those candles? The, the yeah, menorah. Candle. You're talking about a Hanukkiah. Yeah, right. Yeah. See, you, you don't even know that? that? <laughs> no, what is it? Hanukkiah. Are you talking about the thing that holds the candles? No, a Hanukkiah. It's no, called the, a Hanukkiah. The menorah has seven, the menorah has uh, seven things. The Hanukkiah has nine. See? So it has nine? Yeah, it has nine things for candles. Chonukia. There's eight days. <laughs> there's eight days and then there's yeah. the one that lights the other candles. So. Thank you. But yeah. I, okay, yeah, so it pops out a little... It pops out as a Hanukkiah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have a, a joke here. Practice. I personally liked the... Uh, First, what they did is they had you had the original with cross cards, and people started putting more on the thing, and eventually you had like a gif of a spinning like saw blade of those around yeah. it. I like that. <laughs> nice. That'd be a sweet <laughs> saber chainsaw. No, but I will say, like I said, Jedi are then yeah, therefore super statists. Uh, 
They're, the they're like your Praetorian pr- guards during like the Roman Empire days, uh, protecting the Empire, uh, or the Republic. Um, so yeah, uh, it's the comics are great, all this stuff is pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting that uh, George Lucas has declared all comic books that came out non-canon. Ew. Uh, Fuck this. Uh, what? <laughs> so every, every, Whatever. It's dude. all non-canon. So, so you, have to, re- Disney. Fuck you have to remove so that from your imagination now as uh, it's not part of the story. Oh, no. Yeah. So. I know that he's the only authority, right? <laughs> well, I guess that's not... the only authority. I mean, no, one, no one besides him can make up anything. Wait. Ever. If it's non-canon, that means... Does the IP still apply to all that story arcs? It does, so it's really expensive, and you have to pay royalties, which does in fact kill any fan art or fan based fiction. With that's bullshit, yeah. dude. All right, bullshit. Uh, I guess something from Star Wars we could talk about it and uh, I detach some thoughts on anarchy and Star Wars uh, cloning. Right? What is the? Uh, <laughs> Ooh, what would talk be about cloning? Star Wars? It's like the ethics of cloning yeah, yeah. and and and. With anarcho capitalism? Oh yeah. no, I don't. Because hmm. they have clone armies, people look at the stormtroopers, yeah. eventually most of the clones die, so they have to start recruiting from a lot of worlds to I mean, fill up their, their armies. Doesn't everyone die though? I don't know. I mean, you'd imagine in the future they find ways for longevity and to uh, I mean, heal, and put did, you in that kind of Did you hear tank. what the argument was, like in one of the movies, for like, why did you use clones versus robots? Because other armies use robots. And they're like, oh, because clones are smarter and will figure things out. It was drones well and like oh so your reasoning behind like actual lives and, and and you know consciousness losing whatever it is they have as a consciousness is because they're smart yeah wow we, well uh I mean you can also put in clothing with uh, gene splicing I think I remember hearing somebody say you know what if um an anarcho what you know what are the um, the effects of like someone gene splicing creating like a cat person. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'll splice myself with an octopus. Oh my god. Furries are going to go crazy. So, like, <laughs> yeah. my thi- so the thing I could say, or the things where I guess we could start thinking about something is, so we have to take into account the non-aggression principle. Like whatever I do, if I like genetically modify myself or whatever, I whatever I do, I have to make sure it's not going to harm someone else. Because I don't want my decision to like, uh, too, too aggressive against you. So if I give myself like you know, lasers on my arms that fire every five seconds, it's a terrible That's idea. That's a bad idea. Because I can hurt somebody. So let's not do that. I mean, if you're the only one on the moon, maybe. Sure, if I was the only one on the moon and I'm you not going to damage... You hurt yourself with lasers yeah. in your arms at And they're not going to damage anyone else's property on the moon, then yeah. There you go. Because sometimes they want to go into uh, how do you... Like, we, we eat animals. You know, we don't assign uh, that they have... Uh, property rights, you know, because they can't argue from. There's a lot of different uh, thoughts uh, in that regards. Um, one would be we're species, right? Humans over other animals. And, this and, is why we don't eat each other. And there's another thing. Like if we think more like if we think more sci-fi, like dark kind of stuff. What if somebody genetically modifies the human genes? Do you get a person? Do you get the intelligence of a person, but with no, like none of the free will? That's a dark, dark thing to think about. Well, the same thing like creating a cat person looks like human, very cat like, but it's still a cat. It's a kishi. It's a, <laughs> yeah, and it's not a, it can't reason, can't, uh, it acts like a cat, but just like, uh, looks like a cat, or like a humanoid. Does it know how to poop in a litter box? All right, I guess, I guess it would. I guess it would. Oh, it's better. Right. <laughs> like, what, what I think will, will event, like what will happen in a, an anarcho capitalist society is people who are okay with that ethics will go ahead and use it, and people who aren't won't participate with people who use that technology or use that or thing, and they'll have a, they'll be plurality of other methods to like. Right, stuff right, out. right. That's where I think will happen. I, like, I was, I was uh, uh, before that was trying uh, to connect with uh, I guess interactions with uh, extraterrestrials. How do you know that uh, if you can eat it? Or you have to respect it because it uh, has property rights. Huh. Right? And like you harvest plants, mm. uh, you harvest animals, you come across uh, an extraterrestrial, do you say, well, I wonder what that looks like, you know, uh, roasted or, you know, with some paprika? Or. Um, Why would you eat it? It could be poisonous. This is yeah. true. <laughs> it could be. I mean, it probably has a foreign, you know, biological structure that would. Until you fuck had your studied brain. it. 
Yeah, I feel yeah, like I'm, 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 of course what we're saying we're <laughs> study it, and it comes out. I feel like it's I edible. feel like it's it needs to be like recorded and scientifically like and in our theology. I mean, this is of course uh, <laughs> prefacing like we come across a planet. There's uh, there's life on there. Um, do we extend property rights to other aliens, and what kind of conditions? How would you do that uh, for? In terms of like, what if? Uh, Monkeys can communicate now, right? Uh, in terms of like, uh, you have some that have some of ability to communicate through uh, hand sign language, right? Uh, so some people say like a precursor for property destroyed rights would be uh, being able to um, argue that you have property rights, right? Being able to argue, you know, uh, alien. Can you go any more basic than that and even just talk self awareness? Because even to understand that you can own property, you have to understand that you exist. Yeah, there's there's a lot of high level logic. There's a few high level logic things that you have to understand. You have to know you exist. Secondly, you have to think about you have to be aware of something in the future that you can expect. Like if you are just aware of your reality right now, but you can't that you can't remember, like an hour ago or like a day ago or think about a day into the future they're just kind of you, you can't like own things like, I mean, yeah. like that's my lighter like it'll be in my pocket tomorrow like you, like, but if it but let's say it's that I won't have it anymore right and you won't know it's a thing but I mean squirrels like very nuts and they know where that is crows do the same thing and they're very intelligent creatures and we right. know that, that adds to their intelligence and it's why they're like you know, what point can we not uh, can we extend property rights to them that they that you have to respect them as you would uh, a human being? So it would have to be it would have to be at the point where you're not just you 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 don't just have the ability to propel your will and influence over yourself in present and in the future, but that you can that you can put that will together and know what it takes to do whatever that objective is in a set time period. Like you have to be able to plan be be. You know, have the presence of mindness to be like, yeah, this is what things are to describe it and to understand. That, and that's the only way you can do it. Mm-hmm. That's really imperative. It's like talking about whether or not animals have emotion. Right. It's a little more complex than like pulling away from like pain or being frightened by something. Like legitimately being happy, recognize, being able to recognize like how you felt differently because, when something else. And the thing is, if we answer that question, that might bring up other questions like well that means what what if we figure out if we figure out like what that like when is something conscious and when does it have property rights some people might try to extend that argument and be like babies humans don't develop all their mental faculties right. like until you know, months or years they might start to claim that if, if, before a certain age they're not people or they don't have property rights right some people will say and that would uh, be so we have to we have to draw our lines very like we have to think about it right they'll say that they don't have uh, they're not a moral agent uh, therefore it's an aesthetic choice that you don't eat babies and aesthetically you're just frowned upon uh, those who do decide that you can't eat babies <laughs> because they're not uh, moral agents um, I love philosophy on that <laughs> it, I, it's so you can argue both ways it's great you can. You cannot right. eat moral agents. <laughs> <laughs> but you can eat economic agents that aren't productive enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. Anarcho cannibalism. Are you like we to... should eat poor people? No. <laughs> like, what oh, if the poor people ate themselves? What? <laughs> Those like spider crickets. They'll eat their own legs and they start to starve. All right. Oh, if, if, they, if they have. No, that's terrible. So. Yeah, anarcho capitalism will totally take place in a like economic collapse. But one of the big fears people have in the economic collapse is that everyone will just run around killing each other for food. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I, feel like, I feel like you have to be a little more. Did you not just? People. Did you not see the season of Walking Dead? What? Uh, I, mean, I feel like you have to be at least, you know, you have to be like not able to steal from some other source to be able to eat a person. Speaking of The Walking Dead, anybody catch watches that? Catches that? I haven't seen there's, it. There, there's a scene uh, where they ambush uh, their enemy. Uh, they're going to do. They're going to capture their the enemy to do a trade because they have captured mm-hmm. some of them. And then so while one of the girl is watching one of the captives while they're going out there to negotiate for the trade, uh, of course it reveals that these people call themselves cops in the post-apocalyptic world. And that's kind of troublesome alone. That's sort of alerts you to something already. But of course this uh, cop captive is uh, soft-talking, is uh, trying to yeah. warm up to you, he's trying to pretend like he's on your side. Um, and then of course he eventually gets the uh, 
<laughs> was just able to trick her and get the uh, jump on her, uh, knock her out, and escape. But he could have killed her at that point if he wanted to. I mean, you, you, it's it's even more disturbing because like the sort of main character uh, was a cop, but he doesn't call himself a cop anymore. Like, right? Yeah. There's like he gave. He, they're, they're in in the earlier episodes. He kind of gives that away metaphorically. He's like, yeah, I'm not a cop anymore. Right. Well, I mean, well, they actually asked him in that episode when they saw him, like, the way you talk, you were a cop, weren't you? Yeah. And even he wouldn't answer the question, really. Like, yeah. he was like... Like, that life's over. But for, like, yeah, that girl, matter. though, I mean, it feels like, do you guys not uh, have... Did you guys forget you had cops in the other world? You couldn't trust them? You know, did, did you forget about that? Did you forget that they can sometimes be soft-spoken and behind that smiley facade? So I always watch, like, the first episode and the last episode every season. (laughs) I could just, like, skip over all, like, the dialogue, the character development, and go right to where they kill each other. Why would you do that? It was great, because, like, fuck the governor. Yeah, I saw that one. That was nice. No. Unacceptable. Actually, I did it with uh, Breaking Bad. I saw it with them. Unacceptable. Oh, I saw unacceptable. I, I saw the last episode to see how. Oh, just reads like the Wikipedia. <laughs> he goes and reads each episode. Oh, okay. Unacceptable. Read the plot. Oh, I got it. <laughs> no. So that that irked me. Uh, I was like, Jesus Christ! Do you not have police brutality uh, before the apocalypse? Do you not watch the shows? Do you not watch the news? Uh, how can you even turn your back towards a uh, police extortionist? And yeah, he gets to jump on her. And uh, her life could easily end it, but you know, movies and scripters. They also didn't writers. tie him down. Right? That's it. Yeah. They handcuffed him, but didn't tie him to anything. Wow. Yeah, nothing I went into it whatsoever. So that's uh, kind of upsetting. I think I remember this one scene where it gets, uh, I forget some of the characters, like the sheriff guy. Uh, I said, this is not a democracy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right. It sounds like, yeah, this, you're acting like a democracy a little bit, but at least it's <laughs> voluntary, consensual, I guess, in that sense. But some of the remarks that they make there. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that was, I think that tonight is the last, uh, series finale. No, I think we skip tonight. They skip yeah, tonight. I'm pretty sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Television likes to stress that shit out. <laughs> I think people are still with their families. Right. Well, families can watch it together. <laughs> it's a family-friendly show. Everyone needs to know about zombies, come on. Right. Uh, so one of the last, uh, I guess we have another topic here is, uh, so this Thursday, fast food workers in 150 cities are going to go on strike for $50. Why? Uh, so stupid. All right. I mean, you, you, you uh, can, you can negotiate, do whatever you want. Wait, you 150 hours? Pay. 150, uh, cities. Oh, okay. That's absurd. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the idea of striking in this society is very corrupted compared to a free society because in a free society it's really really risky to strike and you have to be absolutely sure you're being paid below market value for your job because as soon as you go out there and say I'm not going to work for you they can say oh who wants to work for less and if yeah. it's and if it's if you're working you know above or at market value then more people finished. are just going to go in but if you were right then they won't be able to find anyone that can work for them and they'll raise your pay, but it's so, uh, a risk. If, right. if you live in Richmond and you're looking for a job at McDonald's, a good place to show up would be the McDonald's <laughs> on Chamberlain <laughs> Avenue this Thursday at 11 a.m. Dress nice, come in with a resume, and maybe get a job <laughs> once some of these people on strike get fired. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's to be interesting. I, I'll, I'll be showing up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just like interview. What are you striking for exactly? Right. Well, it's interesting because they want to say they want a living wage, and I think that's uh, yeah. But we all want a living wage, sure. Like, I mean, uh, but I, when you ask them, uh, what are the things that are preventing you having a living wage? You, you know, there's the uh, it, no talk about taxation is ever mentioned. You know, that's you know when people talk about like service, about like two point five, fifteen percent, or like two dollars and fifty cents is pays back to taxes. Like, so we need an income. You know, re- remember that when you go to a restaurant, it's like, well, 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 where's the you know government stealing my my money here that? Uh, wage theft you know where's where's that acknowledgement where's that advocation against all theft uh universalizing oh, yeah. that so that's kind of upsetting when you people talk about a living wage and they don't uh mention that it's like part. i want a living wage but with taxes oh and i don't want to learn any skills that people want to buy Right. If they think oh. pressing buttons and flipping hammers is worth fifteen dollars an hour, how much do they want to pay someone 
Uh, yeah. How, I mean, it's driving your clear. kids to school every day, or you know, somebody yeah. operating on someone's heart. They have the robots ready. Right. They have the machines. <laughs> right. right. They have the machines. I'm ready, I'm ready for fast food to be replaced. I'm ready for all Passed of those out. I mean, out. they have oh, a right. uh, replaced. Some McDonald's have. Uh, Self serve ordering things. Yeah. They should. Look at Sheets. You walk in. You. you I mean, if you, if your order is wrong, you order wrong. You get on you, man. They. they you can't blame another yeah. person taking Boom. your order. You and there's up. and there's still a person doing like most of the parts that like for food yeah. preparation. But it's so you don't much have to have anyone They've a burger machine order. now. That's a, that's a waste of a. It's better. Of a person. Yeah, it's. I, I like their system so much better. Right. So right. this was something I wrote about recently in a rhetoric piece on uh, was it Ethos. Where you have a uh, social, socially ethical decision when you deal with people in the service industry. The way you receive service and the way other people provide service. And I think there is like an exchange where sometimes that gets a little messed up. And it comes on the service industry side as well. And I think that's something Uber is doing, bridging the gap between the customers. <laughs> Uber. Okay. Nice. The right Free Uber. plug. <laughs> Has anybody read it? Have you gone on Uber yet? Or Lyft? No, not yet. Uh... I haven't really. I guess I will be soon. But. I have a car. So you have a car? Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess uh, late night drinkings, it's uh, a lot more cheaper and affordable. What will be the uh, going rate from here for Fallout, do you think? You can get anywhere. You can get across the city. Yeah, yeah it's a dollar sixty a mile. You can get across the city for like 10 bucks. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Done. Done. Oh, and that referral code will actually get you a free ride. Oh, I got here, yeah. Yeah, oh, if, you just, if you sign up there, you just enter there, you get your first ride's free. Only in Richmond or anywhere? Well, it is Richmond, yeah. Okay. Because I'm a Richmond driver. Nice. So yeah, well, we'll see what the uh, well, what kind of uh, responses I get this Thursday. I'll, I'll I guarantee show up there. you they will be very bright. Interview. Well, we'll, we'll see. Anything that works. Well, I, I, well, I, again, again, again well, I can't take too much judgment if the argument no, against no, no, no. the state has not been presented. I think, I think if the, the key, realization that, that taxation step that they. I, it's like, like, how about hey, if you start getting paid fifteen dollars an hour, those the cost of those burgers is going to have oh, to yeah. go up. The cost of them, and because the cost of those burgers are not, the cost of everything else is going to have to go up. Yes. People can't afford it. People lose their jobs. So yeah. now the cost of living just goes up. And now all people who were making like $20 an hour are now actually taking a huge pay cut because mm-hmm. they're, that money is worth less. So when they're advocating to get paid for more, they're actually advocating for people who, unless you're going to raise it like across the board, not just minimum wage, but every wage, like you're advocating for people that get paid more to actually take a pay cut. Yep. Right. For well, you. The thing is that this affects McDonald's specifically. So McDonald's makes some better better burgers. Like make better food so your customer wants to pay more for it and then you can pay your employees more. Well I mean if they have a market for uh uh, like cheap crap food, so that's five guys you want a burger. See right? that's yeah. like a fifteen dollar combo though. But I'm willing to pay five dollars. Okay, see that's the thing. Just the burger. Good. Just exactly. Burger. But right. like when people are used to paying a dollar for a double. Five guys still open. What's the name of that good burger yeah, place in Carrie Town? Oh, burger Bach. Yeah, burger Bach. Right. Right. Actually, it's burger batch. Burger batch. Yeah. Right. I think the that key place is delicious. I love <laughs> it's lamb not burgers. local, oh. but it is grass-fed beef from New Zealand. I love the lamb burgers. Yeah. Mm. I think the key when you if you you know ask these people questions, let them answer the stupid answer first. Before you point out how it's inconsistent, or they will just shut down their mind well, instantly. I, so, so the thing is, I don't. I'm trying to avoid conflict. Uh, so uh, <laughs> just be like, "Why are you here?" Right. Well, yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah. In, in, in a way to help them realize. Kind of mark. If you're gonna though. right, they're gonna advocate that's you know like buying your own uniform is waste. That uh, you should uh, at least acknowledge that taxation is also theft. Uh, and so that would be the natural conclusion. You know, therefore, you should be against government uh, and, and, and talk about that. So, I don't know, we'll see. That's, I'm usually trying to go towards the direction of accepting of anarchism. Then, so, man, this guy's an asshole, making me look stupid and humiliating me in front of other people. And uh, I know a lot of people like that conflict tension thing. Uh, <laughs> I think Tom wants to say something. All right. So, so, within, within, <laughs> I said that, I said that, uh, all right, uh, so yeah, this is the thing though, like, um, do, we all saw the first, but this is the last five minutes, all right, this is the last five minutes. Oh, you want to say something yeah, about Ferguson? Okay. Yeah, okay, just to like go Ferguson. for it, um, so we all saw the footage of Ferguson, and we saw a McDonald's kicked in and looted, pretty much, right? We all saw that, right? So how long does it take before a strike becomes a riot? 
Like, how, how do protests get violent? And, like, what do they destroy? Socialist provocateurs coming um, from the cities. Agitators. <laughs> people who want to take it. Like, for example, if I'm at a peaceful protest, all I need is one violent act to cause a chain reaction of the police attacking the protesters, and then the protesters will be like, hey, no, and they'll fight back. And then you have madness, and there are people who want to steal from people who want to cause this to happen so that they can then loot stores and et cetera, et cetera. They could also be initiated by the protesters, though, not just yeah. the cops, but X, and, and usually, and, like, if it were to be initiated by the protesters, yeah, that's they would be a pro. Uh, but I think it really begins when you have the first folded metal chair being thrown in the air. Okay. Uh, that's nice. Really, yeah. That's in its really... Oh, that's okay. Okay. I think that's yeah. clear. It's a clear... Yeah. Uh, Where did it sign? Boondocks. Boondocks? All right. Yeah. It's a good sign. I'm sorry. That was a good reference. Good reference. That was it's that. like when the bricks fly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Line brick. so When the bricks fly, the wing that start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really There's sucks to see uh, these yeah. businesses being the attacked. Uh, the misdirection. It's like, well, what did, what did uh, that pizza joint do to you? What did McDonald's do to you? What did... Uh, how dare they provide uh, you with a service? Was that gas station that, where, the, where the theft occurred right? and destroyed that? And this that picture of that guy just standing there like... He's fucked. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. There's this, there's this woman yeah, who, has, what the, mm-hmm. who had her own bakery uh, and people smashed her windows and shards everywhere and she's still trying to make the orders. And A lot of help came out though. What? Uh, Seriously? She was like... So My like, well, but there's, apart there's, with these cakes. Yeah, well, there's orders. She, she's, her life is, uh, you know, yeah, is dependent on down. her. Yeah, it's, but but people heard of this, uh, what happened to her, and there's like enormous amount of support uh, to help her build back up and everything again. The question is, was that advertisement for Ruth Kareem's in Ferguson? Oh my god, real. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you, that's, that that what's happening there should be even more evidence that the police do not protect property. The police at all. do not protect property at all. <laughs> <laughs> right here. They have no obligation. Look at how I have no obligation that they didn't even protect any of this. Like, uh, they protect government property, sure. Oh, yeah, uh, they held that police. Uh, private <laughs> security. Private security was on the scene, and you know what? If that becomes like a part-time job where you can just jump into an area with Uber security. Bonus, well, now it's not cool. Tyler's security for us. But yeah, there were there was private security at first, and they did hold down some stores. All right. But yeah, that that whole thing could have went differently if the police did anything more than just protect their little spot in the whole fucking region. So they did not protect them at all. If I had owned a store, I would be at that store with a fucking gun. Like, you come through my door. You did. You're done. You're done. <laughs> You're yeah. down. But you would need like Sorry. four or five other people actually. Hey, security I'm glad I got friends. Right. Now. <laughs> But for those businesses that are down, the rooftops, like, 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 yeah, no roof greens. I guess they, I guess they deserve for yeah, free jobs, for offering, offering employment, for offering in a way to, you know, like you can't be called goods and because, services, you know, uh, because they're you know, fuck you guys for for offering voluntary stuff. Uh, it's interesting. I guess a lot of these uh, attention sometimes people bring to Walmart too, uh, as if you see the Walmart workers uh, walking in there, with chains and and balls on their on their feet, you know, tied to it and can't escape. Yeah, they're forced to work at Walmart. You didn't know. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's just interesting how um, the distractions always towards capitalism, always towards uh, businesses, and uh, so the real focus you know, should be covered. The police station, the government buildings in Mexico. The Panther made a point like like they're going after the government buildings. They're burning it down. Not that we're advocating burning shit down, but uh, <laughs> but in Ferguson, it was everything. But it's like I'm mad at. Cal here, well, I mean, but I'm gonna pick a fight and bur- hit everyone else in this room. To be right? fair, and they did that- burn a couple cop cars. Okay, well, whatever. Let's keep it between your dispute with the other people. Right. Right. But yeah, it was it was horrible, and I hope nothing like that happens again in the future. But at the same time, it was good television. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. So, any uh, last topics anyone would bring up? Uh, last minute commentary. Got a stranger. <laughs> they're stranger danger right now <laughs> well no this is great this is a good wrap yeah, up uh, so yeah let's end it right here we're at the hour mark so <laughs> oh my god is there my hair's on do it fuck be a man so that uh, thank you for watching uh, our episode if you have any topics for us you'd like for us to go over uh, we, we look over the commentary leave it in the uh, section below and with that liberate RBA liberate RBA